So I want to welcome you all. Uh, my name is Bryn McCagg. I'm founder and CEO of Recruitify. And I want to welcome you to Destination Talent. I've been to a lot of HR conferences, and we decided to go to market a little bit differently. We wanted to uh, have an event where we brought together thought leaders like yourselves and had open discussions about best practices and learn from each other about how to improve what is obviously a difficult and challenging part of uh, every business, which is recruiting. And remember, every CEO, if you ask them what's their most important asset, I'll bet you they'll all say their human capital. So we're, you're, you're all in very important roles and can affect very important change. I want to show you this pencil. <laughs> and no, the number two pencil is not the greatest invention in the world. But I think that collaboration is. And I, I always ask people, who thinks they could make a number two pencil from scratch alone? Does anybody think they could make this if they spent the rest of their life? OK, good. I'm glad you were all invited, because you're very smart. I've been to other conferences, HR conferences, the other ones, and people actually raise their hand thinking they could manufacture the number two pencil from scratch. It just can't be done. When you think about the complexity of just the, one of the most simple devices in our economy, the lead or graphite, the wood, the paint, this says yellow paint and green paint, the copper, the, the eraser, the complexity of just making something so simple highlights what is the greatest invention of mankind, which is the ability for us to aggregate our collective knowledge and to store it and to aggregate and co uh, our collective efforts. So how is that affecting the economy? Well, there's a recent trend in technology. We're all carrying around basically, you know, the equivalent of supercomputers. Um, we're all connected now, uh, real time, uh, on networks. They're very complex algorithms on these devices. And it's making our economy uh, much more efficient, and it's changing some big sectors of our economy. And let me point to some examples. Wikipedia. In 1436, Gutenberg invented the printing press. Before then, the only way knowledge could be transferred, unless it was written on a parchment, was around the campfire, around, you know, talking to, to, from one generation to the next. And things got lost. With the Gutenberg press, we started to be able to store knowledge. Not coincidentally, the Renaissance began right about at that time. And for the last 244 years, one of the best selling books of all time was the Encyclopedia Britannica. In 2011, unfortunately for the Encyclopedia Britannica, Wikipedia was invented. And within 11 years, Encyclopedia Britannica is gone, sadly. But, Wikipedia now is the sixth ranked website of all time. It has eight billion page views every month. I'm sure you've all used it. If you have kids, I'm sure they've all done research on it. And the collective knowledge on Wikipedia is greater than all the libraries in the world combined. It's an incredible resource and it's a game changer. For those of you who are not, so that's an example of collective wisdom being stored. Zipcar, for those who are not familiar, is a shared car service used in New York and other densely uh, populated cities. And it's an interesting model because it's an example of sharing a collective asset, a car. And Henry Ford, as we all know, you know he didn't invent the car, but in 1903, he started one of the preeminent uh, car companies in America. And today, there are more cars in the United States than there are adults. It's an unbelievable stat. Most of those cars are sitting idle. Zipcar, according to their stats, they consolidate the value of a car or the usage of a car from 15 cars to one for the people that are using it. So those people would have to have bought 15 cars. Well, that's bad news for the car manufacturing industry, but it's incredible news for you, the consumer, the environment, the resources we use, and everything else. For the people that use it, they don't need to maintain the car. They don't need to obviously you know, uh, change the oil. So it's affording great benefits to the users. And according to the Wall Street Journal a couple months ago, they wrote an article about this. That it's now cheaper in densely populated cities 
to share a car using Zipcar or Uber or other shared cars services than it is to own a car. When you think about the cost of the car, the insurance, um, the maintenance, the garage and everything else. So that's an interesting example of a collaborative uh, a, a model sharing physical assets. So now we get to the, uh, the, big, the big time uh, changer. And many of you saw Reed, um, the one, the one uh, early this morning. My one request for this conference when Norm was putting it together was, don't put me on a panel with Reed, because I was on a panel with Reed and he's a great speaker. So, but unfortunately, he put him before me. So next time I want to speak before Reed. Uber, you've all heard of it at this point. 1630 is the first recorded taxi that I could find in France, obviously horse and buggy. Since World War II, the yellow cab taxi medallion in New York City has risen 46,000%. The equivalent, if it was a gallon of milk, a gallon of milk would cost $36,000 today. Unfortunately for the yellow taxi industry, Uber came along. And Uber is a two-sided tech platform. So this is a little bit of a different model where both sides are really benefiting and using the platform. And they came along in 2009. They have now a $50 billion valuation, 165,000 drivers around the world, and they are doubling every six months. And guess how many taxis they own? Zero. And what's happening to the medallion industry? Well, in New York, it's gone down over 20%, but I looked it up last night. In some cities like Philadelphia and Chicago, it's got, the value of a medallion has gone down 80% in the last year or two. So sadly for the medallion owners, uh, that's an extremely disruptive event. But the results are we have now Uber, which I think many of you may have taken. If you haven't, I recommend it. It's an incredible service. Um, Airbnb, and sorry, I was referring to Uber, but Airbnb with Reed, um, that's obviously an incredible game changer. So when, you know, Mother Mary was looking for a hotel, she was turned away from the inn. So that's the first recorded evidence I can find of a hotel. <laughs> now, Airbnb may claim they invented the sharing house, but guess what? The manger was the first Airbnb as we all know. So, uh, but anyways, um, about 100 years ago, Marriott uh, started. Marriott is the largest hotel chain in the world, 700,000 rooms, a $14 billion market cap. But unfortunately for them, in 2009, Airbnb was invented. And again, it's a two-sided marketplace where both sides, the renter of the house and the uh, supplier of the house and the demander of the uh, room are benefiting. A little different than Wikipedia and Zipcar. And Airbnb in a few short years now has a market cap of over $25 billion. They have over a million listings or rooms or houses, villas as we saw on some of the pictures, some amazing places. Um, and in the New York economy alone in the last 12 months, they've driven almost three quarters of billion dollars of value of visitors coming and paying for rooms. That's money going into the pockets of people that live here and have businesses here. An enormous impact in 12 months. And guess how many rooms they own? Zero. And what's happening to hotel stocks? They're flat at best or declining in a boom market, which I don't think has ever happened. So something big is going on. Something really big is going on with the sharing economy. So how does that affect us in talent acquisition? because um, that's, that's obviously you're all in this industry. And let me just go through the histories of, of talent acquisition, which you all know, or maybe you don't, but here, here's kind of the big, what I think are the big milestones. In 1953, Mr. Heydrich and Mr. Struggles, appropriately named Struggles, uh, started one of the first headhunting firms, a preeminent executive search firm, and they defined an industry. And obviously there's a lot of headhunters out there, and that created a whole industry for several decades. And in the old days, you either got people through references, you put an ad in the newspaper and got people to send in a few resumes, or maybe you recruited from campuses, but if you didn't have, do that, you went to a headhunter. Well, that all changed. 
There's a little debate online who started the first job board. Monster's predecessor says they were, but it doesn't matter. NetSuite, NetStart started in 1994, turned into Career Builder. Monster started at about the same time, and they started the job board. And at the time, that was an incredible invention. Think about it. It all of a sudden gave you access to you know, thousands of people, and now you're probably getting millions of people if you use job boards. And their effectiveness was good for a while, but it kind of got worn out over time. I think the next big event, obviously, was right after that, was the invention of the ATS, dealing with the flood of applicants. And RecruitSoft, which turned into Taleo, uh, as far as I can find uh, in my research, was the first ATS. And I know we all love our ATSs. So that was an interesting uh, invention um, that created a lot of change. And I'm sure many of you have ATSs that are filled with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of candidates, very hard to search, and going stale. But it obviously can be a great tool. And then LinkedIn came on, along, and that was obviously a huge change. In 2002, suddenly, uh, and really in 2006, I think would be the year that they really decided to aggressively go after talent acquisition. And today, every single Fortune 500 company has a contract with LinkedIn. It's unbelievable. So they are a great source of candidates. Pretty much most professionals are on LinkedIn. But I think there's something big coming next. I want you all to imagine a platform that could scale infinitely. You could use it in for any position at any level in any geography with no friction, and it was easy to use and it would deliver you immediate results. And it was infinitely scalable, and it didn't have cost anything to use it initially, and you would see the results within days. Imagine if that existed. Imagine if you had a platform that could tap, using quantitative data, not qualitative subjective data, the best subset of expert, money-motivated, yes, money-motivated expert recruiters that wanted to fill a position, and those recruiters uh, were highly motivated to fill a position, but you didn't have to deal with them. You didn't have to communicate with them. Imagine a system that did all that for you. Imagine a system that got better with every usage. And what I mean by that, imagine every time, particularly for high volume jobs, the more you used it, it started to learn what you were looking for. It learned about your corporate culture. It learned about the roles you're looking to fill and it got more aligned with what you're looking to fill, and it did it better and better, quantifiably better, which you'll see very quickly. Recruitify is a two-sided marketplace. Recruiters are out there, agencies are signing up, and they are classified in what they specialize in, and they are quantifiably measured on the results of the candidates, and they get better and better, and they get aligned with their clients on the other side, and companies are coming in and hiring at all levels. Uh, all across the country, and our biggest client now is starting to use it in Saudi Arabia and Dubai. So it's a two-sided marketplace. It drives results. And again, it comes down to this. Every other solution will tell you they can hire better, faster, and easier. Uh, but that, that is ultimately the only measure. Are you making quality hires? How long is it taking you? What's the overall cost? And that's how you should measure any application. So. I want to just go through a little bit of the workflow. Recruitify is an open platform that you or your hiring team can come to and use at any time. You send what's called a job cast. It's basically putting your standard job requisition information in it. We can integrate with your ATS. Uh, we're integrating with Taleo right now for our Fortune 20 company. So that information can flow seamlessly over. A job cast is a 15-day transaction. It's over in 15 days. You come to the platform ready to hire. You either make the hire or you move on. It's just like ordering that Uber car. Either you take the ride or it goes dark. You fill out the information. It takes a few minutes to fill out a job, what we call a job cast. You hit the job cast button. You walk away. It's a black box technology. And what we do is we filter it down to a very small subset of our expert agents. We have over 3,000 recruiters on the platform and it's growing significantly every day. More and more are joining and more and more companies are driving their own agency recruiters to our platform. But when you send out a job cast, don't worry about the numbers. It only typically about 10 to 20 experts get it. And they get it because when they sign up, 
they have to classify what role, industry, and location they focus on. And then, and so if you're looking for a research associate in the finance industry in New York, only the recruiters that have classified themselves in all three of those will get it. We also pace it to them by their capacity. We're not looking to flood recruiters with jobs and we will not flood you with candidates. It's all about less is more. We've done, we've dealt with enough volume, now we need value. And then very importantly, and most importantly, we filter it based on their score. But I'm gonna come back to that in a moment because that's really our DNA. And what happens is those 10 to 20 recruiters get it privately. There's no ability for other recruiters to look at it. There's no ability for candidates to apply for it. It's only those targeted recruiters, and you don't see the recruiters, by the way. You send the job cast, the technology deals with getting it to the right recruiters. And they will start submitting candidates right away. And what happens is when they submit a candidate, they have to put in the candidate's resume, candidate's LinkedIn profile, a note about the candidate, the candidate's cell phone number, and email address. They're all required fields. They can't submit them without that information. And when they submit them, the candidate gets an automatic email asking if they want to be submitted for this job. They have to confirm their interest. If they don't, we don't release their private information. We don't waste your time with candidates that are not immediately interested in your position. And if they do confirm their interest, they're immediately released to you. So typically what happens, you'll send a job cast in two minutes, you walk away, and about five days later, we can virtually guarantee you, you'll get 10 to 20 candidates. And I'll, and I'll tell you why we can virtually guarantee in a second. But all those candidates will be hand vetted by a highly motivated recruiter that's your recruiter. And what I mean by that is the crowd on the other side starts to work with you as a company in a very symbiotic and aligned basis. And engage clients, the more they use the platform, they're gonna find the crowd of recruiters start delivering and they're starting to make a living off of you, supplying these candidates through the platform and they become highly motivated. So the candidates are released to you. All of them are interested in your job because they've just confirmed. All of them have complete information to review, the resume, the LinkedIn profile, the note. You can contact them directly. It's only at this point we even reveal who the recruiter is. You can contact the recruiter at that point. You can, you, we welcome it if you want to. Most of the companies find they really don't need to, and here's why. The one thing you must do on our site is sort. So in building this application, we took from Uber, and then we took from some of the uh, dating sites. Now, unfortunately, the swiping technology wasn't around in my generation, but in my product research, I had to go on some of these sites. And in my swipe rights, I do recognize a few of you. So we'll talk later. Um, but anyways, but those sites are interesting because they're very easy to use. And that's exactly how you review candidates on our platform. You look at them, you evaluate them, and you put them into a yes or no, interested or not interested folder. What does that do? It does three critical things. Some of the things you just heard today. It immediately gives a polite disposition uh, letter, uh, email to the candidate. There is no such thing as a resume black hole on our platform. By the way, companies are contractually obligated to sort, but they also just do it. It takes two or three minutes a day. It's super easy to do, and you start to realize the results get better and better. Um, but so everybody sorts and every candidate sorted. The second thing it does, it gives immediate feedback to your recruiter. So you can sort no and say why. We can tag those reasons to your disposition reasons and your ATS, or you can add notes. Let's say you say oh, the candidate doesn't have an MBA. That recruiter gets that feedback real time in their dashboard and they have an ability to resubmit a better matching candidate immediately. And the third thing and the most important thing it does is it scores the recruiter, and that's our DNA. The crowd of companies is stack ranking and scoring the recruiters every swipe, and it's all based on quantitative results. There, no longer do you need to sit there and qualitatively review your headhunters or third-party agencies. They either deliver good candidates that you're swiping interested and making hires on, they're gaining points, the bad ones are quickly scored off, and it's not only they're not scored off, they're scored off, they're focused. We start to drive recruiters that say they do three things, and if they're good at one thing very quickly, we start to give them only that job. And they get more specialized, and they become more aligned to your company, and high volume roles in particular, they become more and more effective. 
So that's how it works. And we've launched this company relatively recently, but I think we're having some very big impact on some very big and very substantial and, uh, and interesting companies across a broad range of industries. And I just want to highlight, because uh, there's nothing like uh, real case studies to, uh, to show you the effect. Accenture, you obviously, I'm sure you all know Accenture, a preeminent consulting firm. They had a couple of big problems. One, they hired 30,000 people a year. They needed to gain capacity. I'm sure you all need to gain capacity. They just couldn't fill the positions with the team they had. The other thing they had a problem with was time to hire. And they measure time to hire as two to three times the person's salary. Every day somebody's not in a position they want to fill, they value that as a big cost to the business, particularly because they're renting out people on consulting projects. So they want to get their people in place. And then the other thing they had was 600 recruiters that applied to them, pesky recruiters. Now we love recruiters, but they can be a little bit you know, uh, pesky. They'll call you up, they want to be, become an approved vendor, and what do you do with them? They might be good, they might not. Maybe you meet them, maybe they take you to lunch. You know, they buy you a fancy lunch, you say, okay, we'll give you a try. Maybe you have a vendor management system, maybe you don't. You sign a contract with them, and it's an incredibly annoying process. So they, had, they, they didn't know what to do with these recruiters. So they've started using us now on a global basis. They actually just uh, literally uh, this past week started using us in their Saudi Arabia and Dubai office. It's working on a global basis. They, are, they have cut quantifiably eight days out of their hiring cycle, eight days, which is a lot in their hiring cycle. Um, they are filling for their recruiters that are engaged. And I want to emphasize what engaged means. These are recruiters on their platform that are swiping right or left and making hires and are communicating through the platform. An engaged user will result in an engaged crowd of recruiters. And it happens every time. And they're filling about four out of five roles right now that they're sending out on what we call JobCast. Um, they're gaining value from these agencies. But there's no communication, there's no contracts. And you know what, they get matched to the job, and guess what, if they perform, they get scored, and they get more of them. If they don't, you never have to deal with them again. And they're making hires for roles between $65,000 and $250,000. So MSC is a little bit of a different company. It's a third generation industrial company, industrial parts company. It's located in Long Island. Probably not, many of you may not have recognized the brand, but it's a $3 billion company, and it's booming. They're selling a lot of industrial equipment. They had a different set of problems. They needed capacity. They were trying to compete, and they were hiring actually a lot of tech people with the Googles and the Airbnbs and trying to get top talent to come to the middle of Long Island and work for a company nobody ever heard of, even though they're a great company, a very profitable company. So they needed to gain, gain brand awareness. And they also wanted to leverage their current agencies, which they were just not effectively using. The one thing our platform does, it, more than anything else, is it re-engages that human element. And I've been in this industry for a long time, and there's a lot of data out there. There's a lot of great tools to use data to source and to sort candidates. But at the end of the day, in the final mile of recruiting, there's no substitute, in my opinion, for the human element. A recruiter calling you up and saying, hey, are you interested in this job at this company? It's in San Francisco. We want you to move there. We want me to travel four days a week. And there's no substitute for a human person calling up somebody and making them aware of, of a job they would otherwise not even be aware of. And how do I know that? We hire our own people off of Recruitify. And we're hiring, I can guarantee you, top talent uh, at Recruitify. So we drink our own Kool-Aid. Uh, we're hiring our tech people, sales people uh, across the board. So MSC, um, was, uh, they, they are making hires now from 70 to 180,000 on the platform. Kadaptive is a little bit of a different case study. Kadaptive, it's the mo one, most competitive environment in the world right now. They were looking for a CTO. That is a purple squirrel in Mountain View, California. Um, and they also wanted to extend their HR team because it's a very small company. They had really no recruiting effort. They decided to send out a job cast on uh, Recruitify uh, a recruiter submitted the winning candidate in 72 hours. Now, if you call up a headhunter in Mountain View, California, and I've done it, no good headhunter is going to even do a search like this without $40,000 down. And I've, had, I've called up headhunters that said, I wouldn't even start a search if you don't give me $100,000 down. That's how competitive that market is. And a recruiter submitted that candidate in 72 hours, and now they're starting to use us to extend their HR department. And that was a $250,000 position. 
World Stride is one of the largest um, uh, uh, college and, uh, educational travel package programs in the, in the uh, world, preeminent company. They had a different set of problems. They have relatively entry-level salespeople that go sell these packages to universities across the country, but guess what? They had no presence in Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, any of these states, and they had a very hard time finding good entry-level salespeople. So they started to use our platform. They're now hiring most of their salespeople through it. And one of the valuable things I'll tell you is the ability for those local recruiters. It, the recruiter doesn't necessarily physically have to be local, but they specialize in different regions. The, it's their ability to sell the company, to sell the brand, and to humanize it at the end of the day and bring in those people uh, that they were having a very hard time filling. So let me talk a little bit about our results. Our platform is on demand. Uh, in a sense, it works like an RPO in your pocket, but there's no, no contract. You accept our online con uh, terms, and you go to work. Uh, recruiters accept the online terms, and they go to work. Uh, the terms are you know, very fairly written, and uh, if there's any changes, we change it for the whole community. It's easy to use, and there are prepaid packages you can buy to get discounted pricing, but you can try it uh, with uh, you know, no money down. There's no integration. Typically, clients use it, prove the case, and then start integrating with the ATS. We have now 3,000 experts on the platform, and they are growing virally. I think it is very realistic to say that within a few short years, we will have more agencies on our platform than all the other agencies combined. I think we're following in the footsteps of Airbnb and Uber, a two-sided marketplace, and the recruiters are really liking it. We have recruiters right now that are selling our platform to their clients because it eliminates their hassles of communication, negotiation, business development. They want to focus on what they can do best, which is recruiting, sourcing great candidates. 91% of our candidates are passive. This was the most stunning statistic that I found. Companies tell us time and again, we're finding people that they have not talked to. It's, and it makes sense. The recruiter is highly motivated. They want to make a win. And they're finding, taking your job, and they're going out and ferreting out that otherwise passive candidate that's sitting there and not thinking about your job. They're not looking. And they make them aware of the job and they make them interested in the job. They're your ambassador, and if you treat them well, and you sort, and you make hires, they will treat you well. Five days is the average time to hire, meaning the average time to meet, I should I say. Time to hire, we don't control. On average, on the hires we're making, our clients are meeting the candidates in about five days. And if you try the platform, you should measure us on those results. In the first five days, you will see great results. And, we're, and for the engaged client, we're getting about a four out of five fill rate. So when you send a job cast, if you're engaged and you're ready to make the hire and you have a budget and you're sorting, you should expect to fill about four out of five positions on our platform. And then our fees. Our fees for high volume customers are as low as 10%. So if you, they range from 10 to 14%. It's a flat fee of base salary. We don't worry about bonus. We're moving way too quickly. We don't want to track you down, try to collect from you six months later, a year later. $100,000, it's $10,000 flat fee. You pay us, and that's it. You never deal with the recruiters. We administer the uh, fees to the recruiter, and, um, and, uh, and that's how that works. So I want to open it up to questions, but there are often questions that come up that I do want to just raise to get them sort of out of the way. One question that comes up is people say, I want to talk to my recruiters. I want to communicate with them. I know my corporate culture. I want to talk to them. Great. On our platform, if you want, to, if you, if you want recruiters, and by the way, if you want good headhunters and want to go direct, I'm happy to give you great headhunters in any region. I welcome you to go engage them and, uh, and use them offline or online. You're going to find very quickly using them on our platform makes it a lot easier. And the real communication cycle is the sorting. When you start sorting interested, not interested, and give feedback through the platform, they start to understand what you're interested in, and they will start to align their business to your, what you're looking to fill. And you're going to find less and less you need to communicate with them. You can communicate with recruiters through the platform when they start submitting candidates. Again, recruiters cannot contact you through the platform unless you contact them first. So a lot of 
cycles of communication eliminated. Employer brand, we've heard some, some great companies today. Everybody obviously is trying to promote their great brands. We have incredible brands here today. And really that's the, that's the differentiator. If you've got a great brand, you can attract talent. But unless you're talking to every single, and I mean you individually at this room, talking to every single candidate that's applying, somebody else has to do that. And posting it on a job board or on some site is not necessarily conveying your brand as well as a human can. We recommend build out your career page, build out your Glassdoor page, build out your LinkedIn page. We have a lot of best practices. We've written white papers on this. We encourage you to use all those great tools to promote your brand. You are in a war on talent, and I hear it from your people in this room and counterparts all the time that you're now in the marketing business, essentially. You've gone from the HR business to the marketing business. You're in a marketing war, so use those. But at the end of the day, there's no substitute for a passionate, well-informed, well-educated recruiter that's done his research, look at all your sites, understand your corporate culture, and is out there conveying it as an ambassador and an extension of your firm. Confidentiality. This always comes up. I want to do a confidential uh, search. Well, any great headhunting firm will tell you, it can't, you there's no guarantee. And if they're telling you they can, they're just, you know, they're not telling you the truth. There is always a chance in doing a search that somebody leaks the information and the wrong person fi uh, uh, finds out. Just fact of life. So what's your protection against confidentiality? The greatest protection is doing it in a targeted manner. On our platform, only a limited number of recruiters get it. They have very strict rules. They break our rules, they're off the site. And most importantly, the best protection is speed. If you're filling that role right away and you have to let somebody go or there's other reasons that you have a confidentiality, speed to hire is your best protection against confidentiality. Control, this is another issue that comes up a lot. I want to monitor my agents. I want to talk to them. I want to sit in my quarterly meetings and stack rank them and go around the room and say, who had a good experience with this recruiter? You won't need to do that anymore. If you want to stack rank recruiters, you can have access to our entire database. Go at it. Our algorithms are stack ranking them based on quantitative results. The good ones are scored off. The good, the, the, sorry, scored up. The bad ones are scored off. And as you drive your own recruiters to the platform, you're bringing people into the platform. And when I say recruiters, I mean your agency recruiters. You're bringing people that already know your brand, already know your culture, and are already delivering results. And they'll like this platform. And one thing I should, uh, one question I did not put up here, which I want to interject. People might ask, why would a recruiter be interested in a platform that's cutting their fees? And am I going to get the good recruiters on it? The results will speak for itself. We can talk about quality all day long, but when you try it, you'll see the great results. And the reason the recruiters like it, we've compressed their fees down significantly, make no mistake about it, but they're making it up in volume significantly. They're making it up in that they don't have to dress up in a suit and go sell you. <laughs> they don't, they, they're sitting back and doing the, recru the sourcing of candidates, and we're specializing them and their, their lives are easier, less communication cycles. They don't have to worry about tracking candidates, backdoor hires. They're not worried about collections. We administer all that for them. So the recruiters love it. If you don't believe it, go Google it. There's not a single recruiter out there blogging negatively, and we've cut their fees dramatically. And we have recruiters right now selling their own clients where they have retained searches. We had a recruiter last week, a very prominent one, that was getting three retained searches from Ernst & Young. He said, I don't want them. Go to Recruitify and start putting volume through the platform. I'll win my portion of the business. And yes, I get a lesser fee, but it's easier for me. And so we have recruiters, uh, lots of recruiters, starting to align their business to our business. So disintermediation. This, this uh, comes up a lot. Who's this going to hurt? At the end of the day, there's a lot of great sourcing techniques. There's a lot of great uh, 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 ways to hire. And we encourage them, and we will share best practices. One of the purposes of this event is so that the thought leaders in the industry can share those best practices. There's really no secrets in this industry. But there's also a lot of inefficiencies in those processes, as you know. And that's what I think we're affecting. I think we're helping squeeze out those inefficiencies. Companies are using us. 
Uh, they're outsourcing a portion of their job so they can release capacity and focus their team on driving efficiencies into their other methods of recruiting. And it's that releasing capacity um, that really is um, where they're getting value. They're able to gain capacity on demand with no fixed cost down, use it when you need it, pay only when you get a result. We're bringing the best of some of those models, Airbnb and Uber, the collab what we call the collaborative economy, to recruiting. And we're leveraging their, their models. It's leveraging our collective knowledge, experience on a network, and the collective effort of a crowd of experts to impact recruiting, which I think we all would agree is ready for the next generation of solution. I want to thank you all for coming. I hope this has been an interesting discussion. We have a lot of great speeches throughout the day. Um, we're going to have a great uh, lunch later today. We have cocktails on the roof. Don't miss that. It's a, a view to die for. It's one of the best views in New York. And then tomorrow, for those uh, out of town or in town, we're having some really fun events, walking down the High Line, going to the Whitney Museum, shopping in the meatpacking district. We're not paying for the shopping. Uh, and then if you, you still can bear us at that point, we're going to go to some uh, speakeasy bars that are down there that are pretty cool. So it's going to be a fun day, an interesting day, and I hope you get a lot out of this. The purpose is for you guys to share best ideas and come up with changes that will improve all of your recruiting processes. So thank you very much.